What's up everybody, Mark with Coffee and Toys here and today on the channel, we're doing something new. This is gonna be a new Sunday routine and you guys let me know in the comments whether you're enjoying this or not, I'm sure you will. I do read all those comments. But for Sundays, I'm gonna start doing reviews of what I'm gonna call classic G.I. Joe toys. Now what, what's that mean by classic? Basically that means essentially anything that I have owned throughout my life, through my childhood, through my young adult life, now going into middle age. But really, what I wanna kinda of have is a, a presentation of these old toys and the big thing we're gonna do about it is we're actually going to open them. These are all gonna be mint on card, mint in package toys that I'm actually just gonna open right here on the channel. So one of, you know, people are telling me like, this is gonna bankrupt you really quickly if you go and, you know, get an 85 Snake Eyes and tear it open on the channel, no, no, no. I'm not rolling in dough like that. So you're probably not gonna see me opening anything up like that unless somebody just wants to gift me a snake eyes to open on the channel. I, I don't even think I could do it if somebody did that. Um, but that being said, when I was growing up, I primarily had GI Joes from about 87 through 94. And then I dabbled in the 97 through 2005 era of GI Joes, the Toys R Us exclusives, Spy Troops, things of that nature, um, director consumer, things like that. And then I collected, uh, like most people, the modern era, 25th anniversary through the 50th anniversary, ending in around 2016 with the, uh, the end of the Toys R Us and the uh, G.I. Joe Collectors Club. All those are up for, uh, for grabs. We might do any of those on this channel, but for today, we are going to kick off this channel with a review of a 1991 cesspool. Let's talk about it. So cesspool, I remember picking this toy up uh, as a kid. I, uh, you'll probably wind up hearing this story a lot if we talk about my childhood a lot. Um, there was a, a what do we wanna call it? I can't think of the model, modern equivalent. I guess like if you're from the Midwest, uh, maybe you've heard of Rural King or something like that. It's like a, a, a farming slash, you know, a very blue collar store. You're going to go in there, you're going to get your boots, you're going to get your hunting gear, you're going to get uh, things you're going to use out in the fields, on the farm, whatnot. But anyway, Big Blue was in uh, a store that was in Indiana. I'm sure it was probably in other Midwestern states as well. But I used to get a lot of G.I. Joes from... from uh, Big Blue Toys, or Big Blue, Big Blue Toys. <laughs> it's like Big Bad Toy Stores. No, uh, Big Blue. And I used to get G.I. Joe's, and I'm pretty sure that's where I got Cesspool from. I remember getting Eco Warriors, Sonic Fighters, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. I remember all those late Joes. I really, uh, a lot of them, uh, my parents used to go to Big Blue stores, and I would get a Joe just about every time I went there. So, uh, Cesspool was one of those ones I had, and the color changing feature was just fantastic. Um, little fact, if you don't already know, uh, cesspools likeness is actually, uh, based upon, uh, one of the VPs at Hasbro and actually shares the same name as, uh, on the file card as the real life person. And that real life person was, uh, Vince, Vincent de Alva, I, be, I believe Vincent de Alva. And, uh, yeah, he's actually still a person out there. I looked him up right before the video just to make sure that, um, you know, what's he up to? And I pulled up his LinkedIn page and he's uh works for uh, Takara Tomei. So that's still involved in some a uh, aspects with Hasbro. So very cool. But his likeness is what's used on the uh, card art and the actual figure. So it's very cool. We're going to talk about that today. But that being said, make sure you like this video. And if it's your first time to the channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. My name's Mark, I'm with Coffee and Toys, and we do crazy things like review vintage action figures that, you know, people are gonna think I'm crazy. But you might think I'm crazy, you might be right, but we're gonna jump over right now and we're going to look at Cesspool from the A Real American Hero line of toys from 8294, came out in 1991. Let's go check it out. Okay, here you have it. G.I. Joe Eco Warriors Cesspool CEO, Chief Environmental Operative. So nice little play on uh, the title there. Color change, battle damage, weapon really shoots water. So one thing I didn't bring up uh, earlier, these are not going to be 
like the best packaging is the best packaging. Uh, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of money to get something that I'm just going to wind up opening anyway. So, you know, I got a pretty good deal on this just in case anybody's curious. I did not get it for $6. That tag was already on it from years ago. I'm sure I would say this figure probably retailed for like three and a half bucks. Uh, it was near the end of the line. It was kind of considered a more deluxe figure on this larger card. I'm going to guess it was probably anywhere from $3 to $3.50 uh, for the original price tag on this guy. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty beat up. This card is not in the best of shape. We got some damage up here. Of course, it's got the sticker on it. And the big damage you can actually see is right here on the side. You can see the plastic bubble is actually busted open. And you can see a little bit of debris has gotten in there over time, which is fine. That is part of the enjoyment of being able to actually just take this and open it up. So yeah, I mean, this card art um, is fantastic. I always thought he was so gnarly with his scar on his face. Let's just zoom in and look at that uh, that that mug shot there, man. That's that's a wild, wild picture there. And again, this is based on a real uh, vice president of Hasbro uh, at the time. So very, very cool. I'll go ahead and zoom back out a little bit. I want you guys to be able to look at this. Of course, you got the bubble up here. It's got all of these accessories in it, his helmet and his uh, chainsaw thing. Of course, we get the, the backpack that squirts water. It's actually broken here on the plastic uh, bubble too. And then you got the handle, and of course you get the figure. And in behind the figure, you can see that insert to, for the mail aways uh, that uh, basically Hasbro, if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that Hasbro actually invented the whole mail away um, action figure, you know, clip the, clip the UPCs, or in this case, the flag points, and mail them in and get something for action figures. I mean, I'm sure they weren't the first person to ever have a mail away thing. That's just ridiculous. But to get toys and to get you buying more, Hey, send in five bucks plus, you know, 10 flag points and pick up something cool. And they ran that through the entire uh, 8294 series. Very cool. So we will check out that, uh, that insert as well. But let's spin it over on the back and let's check out. And look at this. Watch the new adventures of G.I. Joe on TV. Of course, this is talking about the, uh, the Deke era of G.I. Joe cartoons. And a lot of people, you know, kind of frown on the Deke area of cartoons era of cartoons, but I loved it. I loved it just as much as the original series. You know, I was a kid. I didn't, you know, I didn't notice the animation wasn't quite as great as it was uh, in the Sunbow series. I just thought it was cool to have G.I. Joe's. And I remember Cesspool being a prominent villain uh, in that series as well. Of course, uh, just going over this, we have the Eco Warriors, Flint, Clean Sweep, and Ozone. And down here we have Cesspool, Sludge Viper, and Toxo Viper, all of which uh, the Cobras I had. And very fondly remember having them. You know, wish I still had them today. Uh, what we got up here? Let's just zoom in a little bit and read what this says. The forces of nature are under attack from Cobra and only G.I. Joe can stop them. Utilizing the most dangerous liquid toxins known to mankind, Cobra launches its most diabolical bid to contaminate the planet's fragile ecosystem and bring civilization to its knees. Armed with a sophisticated anti-tox water solution that changes the figure's color on contact, and outfitted with special eco suits that detect environmental contaminants, G.I. Joe moves out to clean up Cobra's act once and for all. Even now, the fate of the Earth hangs in the balance. Man, what a write up. And fantastic. And over here, it tells you how the uh, color and color change effects are different on each figure. It tells you how to basically use the, uh, the weapon that comes with it and squirt the figure, and it changes the color. You squirt. Or dip in ice water to see battle damage, squirt or dip into warm water to bring back to original color. Note, please do not leave the figure in the sunlight or any in extensive light for an extended period of time. And if you know, if you see uh, vintage cesspools or other eco-warrior figures today, you know that they, they're they already damaged and that that, that color-changing feature is, is broken from 30 years of setting out in the sunlight or whatnot, and it doesn't really work anymore. And we will check on this figure and see if it's similar from being in the package for 30 years. And of course, we have Cesspool's fire ca file card down here. As you can see, it's got a little bit of damage on it. And of course, file name, uh, Vincent A. De uh, Da, da Olivia, Da Olivia, I think if I say it, and he is birthplace, Boston, or Newton, sorry, Newton, Massachusetts. And yeah, oh, look at this. We got a, uh, I forgot you had the original file card, then you had this Eco Warriors uh, communication from Flint because he's the Eco Warriors commander. Let's see, this one says four. Cobra has hijacked the GI Joe supply train and added Arbco, Cobra, aerosol spray cans to your unit's monthly supplies. These canisters, as well as other aerosol spray cans, 
that use chlorofluorocarbons pollute the environment and destroy the ozone layer that protects the Earth's atmosphere. You are hereby advised to stop using these canisters. In the interest of keeping civilians informed, the enlisted personnel are encouraged uh, to tell their friends and family the importance of protecting the environment. So, very cool. Very cool. I, I do remember those. I just kind of forgot that it was part of the file card, or a separate piece of file card. So, very cool that they were doing that. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say it right now as I set this back. Um, they could probably rerun with this. If, if, if Hasbro was to do a Eco Warriors line and they put stuff like that, you know, instead of, let's say, doing the file card thing, because we know they're not doing that, take one of those QR codes and have it go to a, you know, a mini game or something on Hasbro's site that deals with protecting the planet. Or if nothing else, have that QR code simply go and tell a kids the same thing. Bring up a little short YouTube video or something, and then the kids watch it and whatever. It tells them the same thing that this file card was telling us kids uh, in the 90s. So very cool. I like that idea. Of course, down here in the corner, you do see Yojo, join the fight against the polluters like Cobra. You get your one flag point and your proof of purchase. 1990 Hasbro. Uh, I thought he was a 91 character. Maybe he was not. No, I still think he's 1991. Maybe it's just uh, when they, you know, started making the design for this card back. But anyway, that's the main part. So let's get into the real fun Let's open this up. Let's open this up and let's discuss uh, cesspool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open it right now, and then I'm going to cut the video whenever I've gotten him completely out of the package, and we'll talk about it more. But I do want you guys to see that I am actually going to open this figure. First time in, you know, 30, uh, let's see, 1990, 30 years, roughly, this has been uh, opened. More than 30, right? 1990, yeah, more than 30. So here we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, we've got that part open. Got the accessories out. And the rest of the figure comes, the bubble comes right off. Of course, we got cesspool right here. We've got his uh, backpack and gun. And we have the Secret of the Dark Lagoon. So, Give me just a minute, get things sit, uh, situated, and then we'll start talking about the action figure itself. Okay, cesspool is out of the package, as you just saw. And I haven't, other than the figure falling out of the package, I haven't done anything with him yet. So let's go ahead and pick him up. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the articulation. It's a G.I. Joe vintage figure, and if you're watching this channel, you probably understand how that works. That said... This figure is so neat just because of the design. I remember as a child, this is what sold me. Actually, two things sold me. The cobra on his chest and just the crazy scar down his face. And we might as well just zoom in on this and just see absolutely how bonkers this figure is. Absolutely. That is a terrifying design. I would love to see the uh, the design sheet on this character, uh, the two up of the character you know, just how they were designing this figure because it's absolutely bonkers. And the other interesting thing I remember as a child is that it's it's asymmetrical. The You know, the left arm and the right arm do not share any parts the same. I mean, this one's all gold. This one's green, and it's got this really nice uh, Cobra Toxic logo on the side. It just looks fantastic. And, of course, this arm being the all gold, we spin it around. Of course, you've got your typical O-ring construction made in china and as we move down you can see there's the color changing feature right there a little bit you can see it at where it's been applied and it's very interesting it's got this like ribbing right here and then of course on the other side again uh completely different you got this kind of keyboard thing on here and really the only thing that's the same on both and it's not even i guess it's not even true there because uh the legs aren't symmetrical because you got a left foot and a right foot but i mean look at this thing fantastic design i love this figure how can you not love this crazy crazy uh eco villain so let's stand him back up there he is and go through the accessories now of course he has his helmet now i want to talk a little bit about this helmet because it is very difficult to find this helmet with the rebreather still attached you will see many cesspools on sale 
or not on sale, but you know, up on eBay or you know, marketplace, wherever. And it'll be missing this little rebreather because it's just pegged in there. Let me see if I can get it. You can see back through there. And and kids would just break it off. Now, I never from what I remember, I never broke mine off, but you see so many of these with that broken off. And in my opinion, it is not a complete figure if it's missing the, re -re the rebreather. It's missing a piece of the actual helmet, therefore it is not complete. So it's very difficult to find these helmets with a uh, rebreather attached still. And look, it's even got a really cool design on the back. Um, just so much work. When, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the classified line today, but because they put amazing work. The only thing I'm saying is all this design work was done by hand and not on a computer. And there's just something to be said about hand-drawn designs being added to a figure that's being, you know, literally worked up with a person's hands and not just being designed. Now, obviously doing it on a computer is much quicker, allows a lot, a lot quicker turnaround time, easily uh, easy to revise, but there's just something special about stuff like this. So that says enough for the helmet for now, so let's just set that down. And then, of course, he has his... Uh, crazy buzzsaw gun accessory thing. And, you know, you would think this would be something that would belong to Buzzer. Um, but it, it, it doesn't. It's, it's cesspools. It's absolutely crazy. And, of course, that it was the weapon of choice he used. Very cool. And then, finally, we do get that backpack. And, yeah, of course, it's, it's really sticky right here. I mean, that's just... God knows what's on this since it was cracked open. But, oh, wow, that's... Interesting. I'm pushing on. I thought I'd feel the air going through, but look at that. There is some sort of, I don't know if the plastic just started melting over time or, or what exactly, or if that's plastic, maybe from the bubble, from the glue on the bubble. I don't know, but it's very sticky. I'm not, not the best feeling right now. Um, but yeah, very, very cool just to kind of look at this. And of course there's the peg hole that goes into his back and let's just go ahead and accessorize him real quick. Let's have some fun. Because I normally don't do this on the channel. Normally I cut away and they're all accessorized, but it's really easy in this case. So there we go. We've got his helmet on him. We'll give him his gun. Let's go ahead and put his backpack on. And let's put the other weapon in his hands. You know what? The joints are tight, but they're, they don't feel like they're going to bust. So again, this is a figure that literally up until just a few moments ago had never been opened Uh can you hear that? Can you hear the squeaking? Because I'm trying to put this big ass handle inside this little tiny guy's hand. Oof, man, this is this is tough. Am I gonna break my first vintage figure on the channel? Only we'll know in a few moments. Man, that is. You know when they said snap on, stay on, they they meant it. Yeah, definitely not any flex in this. Oof. Okay. He is very delicately holding that, that gun right now. So there we go. We have him fully. Uh, there we go. He has got his two weapons of choice in his hands. And I did say, uh, we'll cut back in a minute. I will bring like a cup of water in here or something and we'll, we'll test it out. Um, so we can see that color changing action. Cause I know you guys are probably just as curious if, as I am, if it's actually going to work, but there's cesspool, uh, all geared up. Let's go ahead and take Cesspool, move him over to the side for just a moment, because we're going to look over the Secret of the Dark Lagoon. So like I said, they always included these inserts because they wanted you to clip those UPCs, those flag points, and buy some of their excessive, uh, their excess stock of figures that they had laying around. So I do remember ordering from the Secret of the Dark Lagoon, and uh, the hideous plan unfolds on Cobra Island. And I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I order, and we'll look at the prices. So... I think I ordered from this one. Maybe I didn't. Uh, strange sounds and eerie lights are coming from the dark lagoon on Cobra Island. These bone-chilling noises and weird lights are Cobra's deadly new are Cobra's new deadly device. A monstrous machine that sucks energy from anywhere in the world, leaving everyone powerless and defenseless. G.I. Joe must send in the martial arts unit, hovercraft, and Skyhawk to stop Cobra Cold. But the Cobra, but Cobra is after them with a Sea Ray, Battle Barge, and Jet Pack. So looking at these guys, we have. The hovercraft. The, so look, they were still selling the whale in 1991. Uh, explore the secret of the Dark Lagoon with your own G.I. Joe vehicles and vehicles. They have special features for exciting battles and reconnaissance missions. Um, you know what? As I look at this, I don't think I actually did buy anything from this one. This was a very short mail order one. So you could order a dog tag as well. Um, show everyone that you're part of the G.I. Joe team with your own personalized G.I. Joe dog tags. 
So questions, call our customer service department. Should we, should we try riding them maybe? Maple Plain, Minnesota, and see if they're still there? Pretty sure they're not. But let's look at the prices because that's the fun thing. So here we go. First item on the docket. Let me see if I can get my camera to focus a little better here. The Cobra Sea Ray was $7.95, two flag points, or without flag points, you could buy the actual toy itself. The Whale... The hovercraft was twenty nine ninety five plus five flag points, or thirty three seventy without flag points. Oh my gosh! Doesn't that just break your heart to realize that you know things were? And there's your shipping and handling chart over here. That's crazy. Five or more items cost you five dollars shipping, and you had to fill it all out yourself. That's the crazy thing. You had to put all your information on here. Uh, pick what items you wanted. How many of each one? Add up the totals. Give yourself a subtotal. California residents, you had to put your sales tax, your shipping and handling based on the chart over here, total amount enclosed, and total flag points enclosed. And let's see. This offer was good through September 30th, 1993. That's funny. That's my wife's birthday. I'm going to go tell her that when it's done. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> on her actual birthday um, year and everything. So that's fun. Attach your check or money or no cash or stamps, please. Stamps. That's weird. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I, I apologize. I didn't order anything from this one. I thought I did. It must've been another, uh, one. I do remember getting a lot of these though with my figures. I wonder why I never, I wonder why I never ordered the hovercraft. That's crazy. I'm shocked that I wouldn't have ordered that probably because it was 30 bucks. My parents were probably like, <laughs> no, we'll do something like, you know, and if you think about it in retrospect, I mean, most of these toys were like 250 to 350 in price for a figure. And I mean, you look at these like 395, 595, 695, you know, my parents would probably go for that. But once you get this $30 thing, they were like, eh, -eh you don't need that unless it's your birthday or something. Probably not even then. But very, very cool to see all this and very cool to hold it in my hand after, you know, 30 some years. Very cool. Okay. Let's put cesspool back front and center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to game and focus. And I'm going to go get like a cup of water real quick and see if, or see if we can somehow make this happen and not get water all over my set. So be back in a flash. Okay, we're back. And I've got a uh, cold glass, ice cold water. As you can see, this is actually a, a cup that changes color to purple. Um, so it is slowly changing color around the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off the backpack. I'm going to take everything off. And we're just probably going to dip the figure. I think that'll be... Uh, better suited for this test to see what happens. Uh, if I can get this helmet off, there we go. So we're gonna set everything out of the way. And what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna pull the camera back a little bit. So you're gonna see me, uh, we're gonna set the water over here to the side. And what I'm probably gonna do is, so I don't get this part of my uh, setup wet because this is just poster board people. That's, that's the secret to a blue screen. <laughs> um, you probably saw it whenever I cut off to the side. I've done that in my videos before. So here's the figure. No issues. I'm going to take this 30 plus year old figure and I'm going to dip it in cold water <laughs> just to see what happens. Uh, hopefully we get some really cool effects going on. So real quick, give you a quick look at him prior to his transformation and let me dump him. All right. Cesspool is in the water. I'm moving him in the ice a little bit. See if this actually does something. Oh, folks, I got a... Got some bad news to report. I don't think it's changing. I got him right up against ice cubes. Oh, this is a bummer. This is a shocker, folks. He is... He has been dipped, and I am not seeing any change. It's cold now. Real cold. Let me make sure I read the instructions right. Squirt or dip into ice water to see battle damage. And I am I am not seeing any battle damage, my friends. So, ah, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it because we know for sure that he should be changing on his leg. This should be turning some sort of purple color. And I know it should change on his top. He is freaking cold now. So I'm going to dip him back in here. Give him another little douse of water. Okay, he has been through the proverbial ringer and nothing's changing. He's just extra cold now. Cold like his heart when it comes to the environment. He doesn't care. But hey, you know what? 
30 year old plus figure, I, I'm not going to harm him too much. I mean, you can see clearly he's got water in his joints now. Probably not the best thing to do to a figure is to dunk it in water if you're trying to, you know, collect action figures. But you know what? It was a fun test. It was a fun test to do. Let me wipe him off real quick. Let's see. I've got... Uh, this will work. Drying him back off. Sad that the action feature didn't work, but it is all around the, the Cobra and on the legs. But unfortunately uh, for, for Cesspool, he just didn't change for us. So, all right, let's zoom back in one more time. You can see clearly he did not change. But it was a fun little test. And it was a fun little thing to review today. It was really fun doing this. I think, I think I'm really excited to continue doing this. But you guys let me know down in the comments below. Is this something you guys want me to continue to do? Are you interested in seeing me open more figures and kind of talk about their history? Talk about what I know, what I don't know from owning one as a child to, you know, the history of the figure, reading the file card, the extra blurbs, checking out the action features if they had one. Let me know in the comments below and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because there's this new channel format, just to guys let you guys know if you don't already, on Fridays I'll be doing uh, comic reviews of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, and any limited series from Image Comics. Uh, Saturdays are going to be my normal toy review days where I'll cover anything from G.I. Joe, Marvel Legends, Star Wars, Masters of the Universe, wrestling, just anything that I normally review. Those will be on Saturdays. Sundays, like today, are going to be vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews where I actually open figures on the channel. And uh, Mondays, will be reviewing the Marvel run of the G.I. Joe comic. So be on the lookout for that to come out uh, tomorrow, Monday. I'm going to start with issue number one of G.I. Joe Real American Hero. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me. This was really fun. I'm Mark. You've been watching Coffee with Toys, and I will see you later.